Pastor G. It's Lady T. It's Wednesday. Hump day. We hear the whistles going off, so it indicated that it was time for us to get it popping. On and popping. And we're thankful. <laughs> we're thankful again for life, help, and definitely the strength of God that we uh, currently are privy to. And I'm thankful. And I'm thankful. And I'm thankful. This is a this is a blessed day. This is a blessed day. Can you can you uh, uh, agree with me and 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 actually uh, alert your uh, atmosphere and all of your surroundings, everything that is under the sound of your voice? Now, some of you right now are by yourself. You you, you it seems as if you're by yourself, but I want you to do something, and I think this is very strategic. And I I I, I, I think if we can realize that when we speak. More than just the physical hears. When we speak, speak to your surroundings right now. Speak to your atmosphere right now. Tell your atmosphere. Tell everything. Alert it to the blessedness of your uh, uh, of God's call upon your life. Now you got to say this because faith always comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. So you need to alert the atmosphere. And while you are speaking, and because you hear yourself more than you hear anyone else, mm -hmm. that is such an important understanding to get. While you're seeking validations of a validation of someone else's voice, make sure you realize that your voice is heard more than anyone else's. Mm -hmm. Your voice to yourself is more important than anyone else's. I don't care what you think about them. Listen, I'm gonna be very frank with you right now. I don't care what you think about Pastor G. And what I believe and how much you are impressed with what I say and, and all of that good stuff. Thank you. Thank you. But when it comes to your life, the most important person to believe and to speak is you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead on and empower you today. Your speaking is the most important voice in your life. Your believing is the most important belief in your life. It's you saying and you believing that that provokes God's blessing in your life. It's your confession and declaration that provoke manifestation in your life. So blessed be all of the voices and all of the people that you admire and all of your mentors and all of that. Thank God for them. But your voice is the one that you need to hear declare the blessings of the Lord upon your life. Now, if you are like me, you're going to have to declare in the midst of turmoil. The best time, I mean, let, me, let me say it to you like this. The best time for you to grab a hold to faith is when you need it. Mm -hmm. I just said something powerful. <laughs> I just said something. I just said something. The best time for you to grab a hold to faith is when you need it. The best time for you to believe is when you need to believe. So many people are condemned because when it comes time or in the time of trouble, they call God. You call no God, now you're in trouble. What is the best time to call on him? When you're in trouble. He's a very present help. In the time. In the time. So, so stop tripping. Stop listening to them. If you need him, call upon him. And he is available. Available. The, the Bible says in Hebrew 4, it says that we his throne is a throne of what? Grace. Right. Mm -hmm. And we can call upon him in our time of need. Mm -hmm. If you're in need, call upon him. The problem has been, and you've been getting a pushback and ridiculed and talked about, is because when you have a problem, you're talking to the wrong people. Talking to the wrong people. And it's about what goes into your ear. Yes. What goes into your ear. Because when you hear it, that's when you start to speak it. Yes. And so it's very important, us being selective. Yes. On um, what we listen to. Yes. What we are hearing. What we are allowing to permeate 
in yes. our minds and become our thoughts. Yeah. So we speak them. And if, if it's negativity, then that then so it is. And that is that's why we have to be selective. We have yes. to be selective to with what we're hearing, what we're saying, yes. who we're attaching to, yes. who we allow to be in our presence, yes. who we allow to become our friends. We have to be so selective yes. because if you allow them to be in your presence and to become your friends, you go listen to them. Yes. And if it's negativity, then it's it's gonna be all bad. It's gonna be bad. You're gonna you're gonna get bad results. So we are we are trying to do the simple work. The simple work is you are sanctioned by God. You're going through some things. We all are, but don't let that take away from who you are in God and the privilege and the power that He's given you to speak over your own life. You've been uh uh. uh a, a, a long time in your situation because you've been listening to everybody else speak about your situation and you never said a word about it. So I would strongly suggest today you start speaking your way out of everything. You know, we say people can talk their way out of anything. That's a true statement. Start talking your way out of your situation. Come on. To start yourself. speaking. Yeah, speak to yourself. Speak to yourself. Have your own private party and celebrate me being out of this. I'm out. I'm coming out. That's that's God's word to you. You are coming out. Thank every last one of you guys for being in the house. Katrina, uh, Pastor Joel, Mom, Chad, what's up? Uh, Camille, uh, Maze the Amazing. Thank you, man, for being in the house. Thank you, guys. Wayne Murray, what's up, man? We ain't talked in a while. What's up? Christine Jones, what's up? Pastor Christine, Queenie Griffin, thank you so much. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Now, I need you to share me right now. Katrina Robinson, I think, thank you so much. I need you to share me right now. I need you to share me right now. Now watch this. I have a word from the Lord, specifics, specifics. I've got some things written down, but I feel like this is a day that he's going to move me into specific. The reason why I want you to share this uplift today, because there's some things that are prophetic. Now, we need to hear a prophetic voice in the season. We need to hear a current prophetic voice Amen. right now in the season. They're shifting and changing. I, I prophesied. Thank you, Pastor uh, Joe Twala. Thank you, George. I just prophesied this past weekend and, and the weeks prior, the week prior to this, that the sound of the kingdom is changing drastically. There are some sounds and, and things that worked in a past dispensation that's not going to work over here. This is about empowerment through scripture, uh, through, through God's word, through the scripture. Not about a gimmick or how I can make my voice sound and how I hit you at the right time to try to get you to convince you to believe in something that I'm saying that that might and might not produce uh, what God has said. This next season in kingdom is going to be very specific. It won't be a scream and holler season. Okay. It's going to be a season that's defined with God's word and the truth behind his word because we're going to have definition in it. And so we will get more by simply speaking than we will ever shouting and screaming. People that shout and scream usually do it because their first, uh, 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 they didn't get the response they wanted to the first time they spoke. Mm -hmm. Then I start shouting. That's that's the reason for shouting and screaming. And so it is in our, in our, in our Christian life, we start shouting and screaming because we didn't get the response from the first but i'm telling you this next season of your life it's going to be very simple what is it i'm gonna speak god's word and everything in the universe uh is is obligated to respond to god's word while other people are frantically pulling their hair out you're just going to believe that god said it i believe it and that sells it God said it, I believe it, that sells it. And I'm going to see the manifestation of what I said. I'm not doing this and I'm not getting this manifestation because I'm perfect, but I'm getting it because I serve a perfect God mm -hmm. that promised me my faith is going to make it happen. Now, I need to get into this word. Thank you so much. My sister Sheila's in the house. Sheila Hardeman. Uh, 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 Pastor Charles Anderson is in the house. And now, now uh, uh, Sean Walisa Williams Dockery. Is in the house. She just moved to Atlanta. Blessings be upon you. Blessings, Shanwalisa. Uh, Shan, Shan, let's speak this on her. Shan, Shanwalisa is going to be a sellout. Shanwalisa will be a sellout. Now, what does that mean? Pastor, you said she's a sellout. Well, she's in the real estate. and She needs to sell out of everything. Yeah. All right. So, let's let's move on. Blessings be upon you. Now, let's move on. Thank you, Glory Hill. Now, here's what specifically today. We started teaching on Bundy called the Selective Season. The selective season. What does this mean, Pastor? That this season of your life, you are going to be very selective of 
everything that comes into your space. You gotta be. Now, now you can't be selective until you decide to put value on your life. Okay. If you have not put value on yourself, you won't be selective. You will let everything come into your space. But when you deem yourself valuable, this is going to be a season that is going to be less expensive. Because you won't feel like I have to pay for people's uh, approval. Because you're going to understand that I have been approved by God already. And I'm just trying to find. Now, it's all right for you to spend time searching out the clarity of God's call on your life. People will condemn you by that. By time, by now, I thought you would have. Don't, don't listen to that. Nah. Spend as much time as you need to spend defining what God wants. And that's, it takes a lot of time because you got to wade through all of the voices of other people and their desires. That's what the time comes. That's what it's consuming is, should I do this or should I do this? And now you have to wade through all of this stuff. Thank you, Tammy. You have to wade through all this stuff. That's been the delay. It's not been because you had no desire to hear God, mm -hmm. but so much of your hearing was for somebody you thought was God. Oh, my God. And so when God starts speaking to you personally, the people that were God is now offended mm -hmm. at him speaking to you personally, and they're still speaking. And out of your honor to them, you're still giving them space to speak. Mm. And so what is happening, you are confused. God has told you definitively, Go! And you were saying, but this is going to offend them. Well, let me say it once again, because scripture says, Jesus says, all will be offended in me. In other words, when I'm making a move, or I'm making a definitive move toward purpose, it's going to be some offense. Ain't no way you're going to get around it. And he says, he says, all of you going to be uh, offended in me. He's talking to his 12 that he handpicked. Some of y'all going to be offended. I'm just going to tell you. Peter said, not me. He says, listen, Peter. Mm -hmm. Listen, you're going to be offended Because I'm about to make a major move mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, this move that I'm making Is so major that it's going to change The whole mindset of the world mm -hmm. And so whenever there's something produced That changes mindset, people are offended Because some people are being very Prosperous from a mindset mm -hmm. And they don't want you to change Because now, how does that affect what I'm mm -hmm. trying to do When you're trying to do what God told you to do mm -hmm. So you got to make a decision So this is the selective season First thing that God does in your selective season is tell you to scrutinize who is in your life right now. Mm. And you are uh, feeling some kind of way because you feel some kind of way about somebody that you had in your life. Now I'm feeling some kind of way. What is going on with me? Why am I feeling like this? God says it's time for you to move on. Mm -hmm. And you don't know how. And this, 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 let me give you very, very, uh, uh, very viable information right here. I think it's very viable. You don't have to be mad to move. All right. You don't have to be mad to move. Now, they might be mad when you move. You don't have to be mad to move. You can just just very politely say, I have decided I'm going in a different direction. That's all it takes. Don't wait till there is an argument because arguments are uh, produced when you won't make the necessary move. Mm -hmm. There has to be, as I taught on Monday, there has to be starch contention. Because you won't move at the prompting of God, mm -hmm. you stay around. Please hear me. You can just decide that it's my time to pursue God's purpose in me. Yeah. Period. I don't need. I don't need to fuss. I don't need to fight. We can still call each other. Mm -hmm. We can still say hi. To, how you do? And I can be on. I can love you without lingering. Amen. Don't let them tell you that if you leave, that means that you don't love. No, that's not. You're leaving because I do love you. I don't oh, yeah. want I don't want this ship to start being rocky because I got on it when I was supposed to be going to Nineveh. Okay. I jumped on here with you and I don't need you to be rocky. So I don't need to be mad to make a move. I don't I don't need to be make a move. I don't I don't need to be mad to make a move. All I got all I'm saying is this is what God told me to do. And this is this is gonna bless you. Really, it's going to bless you. You're going to discover if you allow God, if you get away from the traditional thought pattern, that this was really a God move. I was just wanting you to be here. Uh -huh. It's okay. It's okay. Now, we are moving into divinity. This is a selective season. Please hear me if you never heard me before. Because life is contingent upon this particular move. You have expended the grace for the time and the space that you've been in. Please hear me. Expend it. When you are not seeing, we are actually living in mercy measures. Mm. Because God is such a merciful God. You say, I'm still here. That's a mercy measure. Grace is the accelerant factor of God. If you 
you're just maintaining, it's because you're living in mercy measures. Because God loves you so much, he extends mercy, meaning you won't be consumed, but you are not consuming things, meaning you're not advancing. And so this season is a very uh, a, a particular season. You got to be very selective. Don't don't feel bad when certain people God changes your your heart and desire. This is a season that your passions are going to shift, and you're going to be criticized because your passions shift because people are going to say you're changing on me, and now you don't lost what God said. No, it's actually me finally getting to what God said about me, and so it's going to be a shift. That does not mean you have to fall out. Please hear me. You don't have to get mad. Now I know under normal circumstances we got to get mad at people to be able to shift and to move and to walk in the purpose. That's not God's purpose. You don't have to. Confusion comes when you don't decide to make a move. He has to do something to cause conflict so that y'all split and go in separate ways. Mm -hmm. That shouldn't be the case in our case. We should say, this is what God has said. This is what I'm going to do. Thank you so much. I love you. And I'm going to bless you as a consequence mm -hmm. to it. And just move on. They're going to say you mad. They're going to say this. Don't worry about it. Stay focused. Stay focused on God's purpose in your life and watch how this season, this is an epic shifting season. I feel this in my spirit like I've never felt before. This is an epic shifting season. I need to share something with you through scripture because I need you to focus on this. You have gotten unusual prompt from God. It's a season of unusual prompt. This is your selective season. Please hear me. You're going to lock down the things that need to be locked down and mm -hmm. things that you can't lock down. Don't spend a lot of labor in trying to lock down something. If it's supposed to be locked, it will lock. Okay. If it's not locking, don't worry about it. About it boom let it stay where it is because it's going to be a less expensive season and a season that you won't be carrying all the weight you've been carrying too much weight that's why you could not prosper you have enough energy to deal with future it's just the past that's been fighting you and holding you down and you've been torn between past and future here's the worst thing that you can do is try to pull something from the past into your future there's not a grace for the past in your future People say, well, you got to know where you come from know where you're going. Yes, you got to know where you come from. It don't say bring it with you. Just know from whence I left. Now I'm moving into a new season. If this offended you, take you another six months and let God deal with you about it. But let's move on. Now, this is a season of selective this. Be very careful. Things are going to sound good. Now, here's one of the major devices of an enemy. Whenever, whenever, whenever God is giving you an opportunity to move into the major, what the enemy do is bring you an acceptable substitution. What is it? He's going to bring you something that looks just like what God says. Now, everything in Luke chapter 4 that Jesus experienced in the temptation, hear me, everything was according to God's plan. A kingdom was God's plan for him. Something to eat was God's plan for him. Mm -hmm. Everything that the enemy tempts you with is something that God has spoken into your spirit. But there's a catch to it. So he wants you to attach to him because God said it to you. Mm -hmm. So if I attach to what he wants, it's usually me producing what looks like God out of season. Mm. You don't want to look have what looks like God out of season. Right. Because just like I mentioned in the uh, uh, what is his name? A uh, 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 Jonah story. When Jonah goes to uh, Tarshish as opposed to Nineveh, God's plan for his life was Nineveh. Yes. If God planned for you to go to Nineveh, God would pay for the fare to Nineveh. But the Bible says that Jonah Thank discovered that there was a ship to Tarshish yeah. and he paid the fare. So when your life is getting very expensive and you being taxed in life, it means you are going to a vacation in the wrong nation or the wrong direction. Please hear me. Please hear me. I'm prophesying. So you're going in the wrong direction because wherever God got, God provides. There are people, unusual people, all the way in that destination that when I get uh, 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 depleted at mile number 10, there's somebody at mile number 10 saying, let me fill you back up. Are you listening to me? When, when I get to mile number 25 and I'm depleted, there's somebody at mile number 25 ready to fill me back up. And so this is going to be very crucial that you be very selective in the season. Thank you, Pastor Angela. Thank you, Pastor Nola. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Tiffany Darcel. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you so much, Pastor Ramon. What all? My brother. Thank you so much for being here. Now watch this. I need to move on. So here it is. The Lord says this very definitively, a selective season. You have been, uh, let me, let me, let me, thank you. Thank you, Spirit. Let me go back to this. When God gives you a unique opportunity 
everything and everybody that refused you when you were trying to come up will now call you because the enemy knows that the door has been opened mm -hmm. and he wants you in your desire for a door to be open he want you to select his door because you want a door to come open. Mm -hmm. And so he will dress it up like he did Jesus. He said, you want a kingdom? Let me give you all of it. Now, it says, in a moment of time, show them all this stuff. Here it is. Bam, 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 bam. Here, 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 here it is. Here it is. Make a decision. Make a decision. Now, now the tense of, of that text is an arrow's tense, mm -hmm. right? What does that mean? That means that he's trying to bombard him with a decision. Now, make it now. You got to do it now. This is one time, one time offer. You better go for it now. You've been asking for it. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. He's pushing you in the corner saying, now you need to do it while you can because this is, but listen, this is now, <clears throat> it can't work for me. Now, please hear me. He's going to send things into your life right now, trying to urge you to make a quick decision on something that you've been praying to God for. It's going to be lucrative. It's going to look so good, but you got to know what God is offering. Why is this important? Let me tell you, because when you go for a door that's an acceptable substitution, remember, here's the first requirement in a door that's an acceptable substitution. You can't bring all of you in there. <laughs> Every door, listen, every door that God opens for you is not just a door for you. Mm -hmm. This door that God is opening for you, he's saying, I'm blessing you to be a blessing. If the door I open for you can't let you be a blessing, and so you are so hungry for the door that you want to become selfish and say, I just got to get it, then it's not the right door. Mm -hmm. Please hear me. Some of the major opportunities, these chance of a lifetime is really just a chance of a lifestyle. I am preaching today. And so what we got to do is understand that when God creates the moment, he anoints you for the call. He gives you his anointing. Some of the things that you've been presented is not big enough for your anointing. Come on. It's big enough for your ego, but it's mm -hmm. not big enough for your anointing. Mm -hmm. And so if it's based off your ego, it's probably not big enough for God's anointing on you. I've got to move on. So here it is. God is going to challenge you to make a decision of a lifetime. God is going to challenge you to make a decision of a lifetime. I'm going to say that one more and again. God is challenging you to make a decision of a lifetime that causes a new lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Please hear me. This opportunity that he's presenting is a decision of a lifetime. This is going to be the decision of all decisions, but it's going to create a new lifestyle. If you can hear God and if you can be very selective in this time of God pulling you from what is old, the thing that you've been praying for, it's going to come in this season. Watch the disguises. Be very careful. Be very careful that you don't get caught up in the deception of the enemy because he knows full. He's got a vivid picture of where you can go and the damage you can do when you get there. And he does not want it to happen. He does not want you to bless the people that God has designed for you to bless. You, listen to me. Listen to me very closely. I got to get this into your life. You're about to get a promotion from God that is so major that it will alter the very course of your life. I had to write that down because I was coming downstairs. I had to write that. You are, listen to me, if you can make this decision, if you can decide to go after God, here's what the, the, the rewards of this decision. You are about to get a promotion from God that is so major that it will alter the very course of your life. I need two or three of you to hear me. I need you to hear me very closely. This is a different season than any other season. This is why you're going to have to make some calls and do some things to some people that's been nagging injuries. I'm going to say that once again. Nagging injuries. Mm -hmm. Nagging injuries. Get rid of those nagging in injuries or nagging things that, that disturbs your peace disturbs your peace that there are things that are just you have allowed things to remain in your life that just disturb you it was not productive it didn't produce but you allowed it in your space so it just was there as a nemesis it was always there to antagonize you always to remind you of all of the things that you've done wrong over and over again the enemy will plant people in your space just to remind you where you come from mm -hmm. so that you don't ever think that you're going to live above what you was. 
and we keep men out of out of out of commitment and honor. I got I got to stay committed to them. What you're saying is I'm committed to old life. I refuse what God is offering. That's the end of the day decision. I'm refusing what God is offering because I'm so committed to what was. What has the what was produced in your life? Mm. If it produced everything that you thought it should be producing, you wouldn't be praying right now for a change. Just think about that. Now, let me move into something. Let me move into something. Because I got to show you the level of this exchange that God is trying to give you. In Genesis chapter number 12, verse number 1. I need you to hear me. I need you to hear me. If you have not shared me, you need to get somebody in the house right now that are in a, a, a capsule right now. They're spinning and they don't know what to do. And they think God is against them. And that's the first thing that we caught because our doctrine has been so detrimental. We think God is against that. I'm going to say something to you right now. Life is not against you. Mm -hmm. You have been taught and you now believe that life is against you. Mm -hmm. And so when you have been taught and you believe that life is against you, every time you see a circumstance come up, you say, yeah, this is God's uh, desire to do this, to teach me a lesson. That is not in scripture. Mm -hmm. I, teach, I no taught way. on last night. I taught on last night that Jesus spends his whole ministry healing the sick, raising the dead, opening and blinding eyes, and calming storms. Mm -hmm. And we're going to think now we're going to get and say we are a Jesus product. And now he's going to change from raising the dead, calming storms, uh, healing the sick to now saying, let me use all those methods to teach. Mm -hmm. We got to rethink some things. You've been condemned. And if you believe according to your faith, be it unto you. If you think that I'm going through this because God is trying to teach me something, then that's your reality because that's what you believe. That's it. Contrary. To popular misunderstanding, the devil is a lie. Mm. The devil is a lie. I will not live in this current condition that I'm living in because he came that I have life and it more abundant. So I got to believe that life is for me and not against me. Yes, yes I'm challenged. Yes, I'm challenged. But everything I'm challenged by is only building my muscles so that when I get to the place of promise, yes. I know how to live there. That's all it's all about. Now, let's go back to the scripture. Uh, what I said, Genesis chapter 12, right? Mm -hmm. Genesis chapter 12, verse number one is a very important passage of scripture because I told you, if you can make this decision that God is going to give you in your spirit, it's going to, I'm telling you, it's going to be like, oh my God, what is this? Am I capable of this? If it's not, if it's not a decision that make you say, can I do this? Am I capable of this? And it don't scare you. Uh, 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 hold up. Yeah. Wait till it comes. Uh -huh. Wait till it comes. Because what God is giving in this season is not one of those, this, this decision to keep you like you are. No, this is season is going to change the very course of your life. Listen to me again. This is going to change the very course of your life. Genesis chapter 12, I got to get to my scriptures because I keep talking. Let me let me get to it and I'm going to read this to you because I need you to hear this because I need you to make the parallel between him and you. Mm -hmm. Because if you say you live the Abrahamic blessing, then what is in the blessing should be uh, up on your life. Mm -hmm. Don't just talk about it. Be about it. Now, here it is. It's a, a Genesis chapter 12, verse number one. Now the Lord, now the Lord, now the Lord uh, had said unto Abram. Now, he's Abram now because he ain't made the decision yet. Mm -mm. Whatever you've been called up to now is about to be changed. You might have been called a loser <laughs> your entire life. But when this decision comes and accepted, your name is going to go from loser to winner. So he speaks to Abram and he says unto Abram, get thee out of Thy country. Now, he's saying to him, get thee out of where you are, thy country. You've called this place home. Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred. Watch it again. Country and kindred and from thy father's house. This is so strategic. Listen to me. And from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. You don't see it now. You can't see it now. Why? Because you are under a mindset that won't let you see it. Mm. You ain't even thinking original thoughts, Abraham. You're thinking the thoughts that's been given you to think. Mm. And so what you think is your reality. And so you can't see the place I'm trying to give you because you can't think outside the box that you're in. Mm. Don't even think you're going to be able to think it until you get outside the box, Abraham. Now, what is this saying? For those of you that can't see it, I don't know, Pastor. I can't move there because I don't see it. Well, God is telling you right now, you won't see it where you're currently living. Okay. It's not there for you to see it there. You got to get outside of this. 
You got to get outside of what? You, I'm talking to everybody in this house today. Whatever you are currently in, if you can't see future, it's because what you're in is influencing you to stay where you are now. Mm. Abraham, look from where you are. Listen, I'm about to take you somewhere, but you got to make a decision to go. Here it is again. Lord said unto Abram, I'm about to change your name. Get thee out of the country, thy kindred, and thy father's house unto the land that I will show you. You don't see it now. It's a strange land. Yes, it is. It's, it's going to be different than what you've ever experienced. If you can make this decision, God is about to alter the very course of your life. Now watch this. Second verse. Second verse. Second verse. Second verse says, and I will make of thee a great nation. That's that that is just that's that's a very powerful statement. I will make of thee what? A great nation. I ain't bringing them. I want you to make the decision as an individual. Don't ask them. You decide on your own. Mm. If you can decide on your own without saying what you think about it or going through what they're gonna think about it, he says, I will make of thee one, you individual, a great nation. You are already in a nation, but I'm about to change the nation that I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm be, this one is going to be uh, 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 created by you. You want to be a part when I'm trying to make you the head of something. I'm trying to make you a trailblazer. <laughs> Watch this, and I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Are you listening to me? Now, watch this. Here is a quid pro quo. I know y'all watching the, the stuff right now. Here is a quid pro quo. Up epic proportion. God says, if you will make this move, I'm going to change the very course of your life. Quid pro quo. You do this and watch what happens. I'm going to release the money. <laughs> I'm going to release... If you do this, I'm going to release this money. Mm. You know, you, I prophesied at the, at the beginning of the year that as we see government go, God's giving us a picture of church. Mm. Please hear me. Don't shut me off now because this is a very prophetic season. Quid pro quo. God has said, if you will do this, it's going to make a lot of people mad. But if you would do this, I'm about to release the money. I'm about to release the funding. This in the government is 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 a uh, security money to make sure you're secure from all your in it. God says if you would do this, He's going to release your security. You ain't got to worry about an enemy attacking you. Stay with me now, and I will make thee a great nation. I want you to hear this very I will make thee a great nation. I will bless thee. And make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Now watch this. We want to say, he's going to bless me. He's going to make my name great. He's going to make me a great nation. We want to say that. Yes, Lord. But we got to listen to what first verse said. This happens when you leave your country, your kingdom, your family. Yes. That's when I make you a great nation. Until that time, you're already in a nation. And what they think and how they operate and how they act is what you're doing. I can't release my new into that old. Third verse, third verse, third verse. Somebody going to catch this. Somebody going to get to Now what? Third verse said, and I will bless them that bless thee. When does this happen? Why haven't I seen the people? How, why can't I network with the people that's got the blessing? Because you still connected to them. You can't get it until you get rid of them. But they mean a lot. Abraham, your father, your country, your kindred. But they everything. Abraham, your father, your country. God says, when I told you what I wanted to do, I wasn't naive of the people that you're connected to and what they mean to you. I'm not telling you this without me understanding that this is how you live your entire life. Yes. I'm familiar with that. So why haven't I seen the connection? I've been working my jelly, but my jelly ain't been working. My Watch God. it. I will bless them that bless thee, and I will I will curse him that curse thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. In other words, until you leave this, I can't bless you. Until you leave this, there's people that's got rule over you that's cursing you. And they and their and their power of their word is stunting your growth right now. You can't even make the move because they're talking about it. Why? Mm. Because you're still stuck in the place that I told you to leave. If you will make the move, here's the blessing as a consequence of the move. Quid pro quo. You do this, you're gonna get this. What are you gonna get? You don't get the the prosperity of a decision. 
Somebody got to hear me today. Somebody got to hear me. Somebody right now is at this point where it's enough. I mean, you done cried enough. You done begged God enough. He ain't answered me. I need an answer from the Lord. He done, he, he done answered you. He done told you to leave. He don't need, see, God don't have a need to speak just random words. Mm -hmm. He says every word I say means something. And so if I've already told you the definitive move to make, why are we talking about other stuff when I've already told you what I'm going to do? I already said that. Let's go, let's go and do what we said in the first, and then we'll get to the second. Let's go back to the first before we start getting into because you're going to muddy up the water with number three and number four when you have not did number one. Mm -hmm. So he says, Dope, before we start talking about all this other stuff, let's go back to number one. Have you made the moves that I told you to make? And if you haven't made the move, I don't need to be talking about all the other stuff. I don't need to be talking about the blessings and what. The blessings are sure when I'm obedient to what God has said. Hear me, hear me, hear me. The blessings are sure. So here it is, Abraham. Here it is. You're going to leave your country. You're going to leave your kindred. And you're going to get out of your daddy's house. Now, these are all, all, all significant when we paint the picture. These are all mindsets. These are all thoughts. These are all patterns. These are all modes of operation that is not conducive to where I'm trying to send you. Mm. I just can't allow that when I send you to the place where with thou art a stranger. Because if I send you from the place that you are to the place that I'm trying to bless you in, and you take the same ideals, I should have left you where you were. <laughs> I'm not trying to do this. Now, let me explain this. Let me definitively explain this because I need you to know what God is trying to do as opposed to all the other stuff. Now, listen to what the text says. This is very important. God shows up at Abraham, Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 15, he says something very powerful, and I need to unpack this because I need you to see it. Watch this. Watch what he said. He says, I called you from the air of the or of the Chaldees. Uh -huh. Now, that's important. That's Genesis chapter 15, uh, verse number 7. He said, and he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldeans. So significant to give thee this land to inherit it. Now, why are you saying this? Because I need you to know what God demanded of Abraham, how big the demand was, and where he came from. Mm -hmm. Because some of you will think God is asking me for far too much. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can even do this right here. How can I do this? And he's going to send me to a land and I don't know where it is. I don't know none of the people there. Well, listen, this whole order is a relaunch order. Okay. Now, listen, listen, this whole order is a relaunch order. It's not just you relaunching your life. He's relaunching the world. <laughs> He's relaunching the world with you. He says, I'm giving you an opportunity of a lifetime. An opportunity of you. I'm trying to relaunch a whole thought pattern. I'm trying to relaunch a whole look with you. You can't even imagine what I'm trying to do. This is what God said. You can't even imagine the opportunity that I'm trying to give you. I'm done with playing with all the other stuff. I'm trying to give you what I created you to have and what I created you for. Now, he says, I called you, I got to show you this, out of the ur of the Chaldee. Mm -hmm. Now, please hear me because this is very important. The land that Abraham lived in, the ur of the Chaldee, this was a very prosperous place. This was a, a, a place that flowed with, with materials and resources. Abraham was a blessed man in the earth of the Chaldean. This is what we got to hear. Abraham was a blessed man in the land that he lived in. Mm -hmm. Please hear me now. So when God gives him this directive to leave his family, his kindred, his father's house, God comes to Abraham and says to him, leave the place that you think is very prosperous, the place of ease, the place that you got it going on, the place that everybody knows your name, the place that everybody knows your reputation and your family's reputation. Why? Mm -hmm. Because this is a place that your family created. Mm. Please hear me now. So Abraham is given a directive by God to move away from something that he thinks is sure 
to a place that he knows nothing about. I need you to see this because when God comes and says, I'm about to change the very course of your life and he makes demands and say, you're going to have to let go of this. Don't think that he didn't do it to Abraham. Since you say you live the Abrahamic blessing, I wanted to make sure you were understanding what it required for Abraham to obtain that mm -hmm. blessing. Mm -hmm. Come, I made you leave the place of prosperity. I, 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 I made you leave. Now hear me now because this is very important. Why would God tell Abraham to leave the place of prosperity? Because this very place of prosperity was not a place that required faith. Hear me? Hear me? That's why he's shifting you. Because the scripture says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. He's challenging you right now in the midst of your comfort. Mm. He's coming to your comfort and he's saying, I need you to make a definitive move. Why is he telling you this? Why are you living in a place of comfort? Why are you living in this good stuff? Why are you living in things where everybody know your name? He says, they made your name great. I told you, I want to make your name great. When God makes your name great, it's different from when they make your name great. Because if they make your name great, they can turn around and take your name through the mud. But what God is trying to give you, he's about to open a door that no man can close. God is not intending for you to be happy for a couple of years. All right. He's intending for your life to be possible for the rest of your life. In other words, the rest of your life should be the best of your life. But the rest of your life can't be the best of your life until you make this decision that I'm going to trust God when he tells me I got to leave the things that are familiar and to move into the unfamiliar. Why? Because he already knows you're living in comfort, but he knows that this don't require faith. And so he says, I'm beginning a whole new universe with you. And so I'm going to produce the thought pattern with the man that I send to the place. That's you. He's about to create a whole new mindset and you can't even see yourself there because you've been so influenced. You've been so under someone else's uh, decisions that you can't even see yourself as a trailblazer. You can't see yourself as a trailblazer. But this is a season that God is pulling you out of what is familiar, what is comfortable. And he says, I need to start something with you. I need to do something in you that has never been done. How many are ready for God to do it? So he had to pull him out of the place that he was already set up in. So many people think, I'm set up. Why should I be moving? Because God is trying to do something greater than you ever done. First thing you got to do is get rid of the mindset that good is good enough. Good is never good enough when better is possible. This is your better season. Mm -hmm. So he's going to have to get you out of good. It's going to be difficult, yes. but he's about to get you out of good. Now, now watch this. Watch this. He says, I pulled you out of the ur of the Chaldees. This is such a strategic understanding why God did this. Because Abraham was living in a comfortable system that was full of prosperity, but did not require faith. Mm -hmm. Now, why did he tell him to move from your family, your country, your kin to your father's house? Now, let me explain to you. You can go back to Genesis chapter number 10. Uh, go back to chapter 6. Let, let, me, let me break it down and then I'm going to get right to this because this is very important. There was a man by the name of Noah. <laughs> Noah. So, so <laughs> this this get, excites me. So Noah, you know, flood. I'm not gonna go through flood situation. I'm trying to get to Abraham. Noah, when in, in flood, you know, him, his sons, and his wife, and the son's wife come off this boat. So the responsibility of reproducing the entire world was at the uh, 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 the hands of Noah's sons, Sham, Ham. And Japheth, please hear me, please hear me. And so, and so, we know the story of how uh, Ham gets in trouble because he uncovered his father's nakedness. But, but watch this, watch this. So, so Sham, a uh, Ham that's got a son uh, uh, that produced a son. This is this is this is so incredible. I need you to hear this because this very thing that God has given us right now, this is going to be a shifting in a total mindset of things that have been in place for years. 
For years, this is an epic moment and an epic choice in the life of believers because God is shifting the whole trajectory of life right now. I need you to feel me when I say this to you because he's going to use you as a part of that move. So here it is. Ham has a son named Cush. Cush has a son named Nimrod. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 10, I'm telling you this story because I'm getting to Abraham. When when the Bible says in Genesis chapter 10 that Nimrod was a mighty warrior before the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, if you really do the context to this boy, this mighty warrior before the Lord, he was not in agreement with God. He was actually in defiance of God. Nimrod is the one that built the system by which Abraham is now living up under. You got to get this because the Abraham was called from the era of the Chaldeans, right? Mm -hmm. Now we know that the Chaldeans from Daniel chapter book number one and two is the language of Babylon, okay. which Nimrod, the mighty warrior, is the beginning of a city called Babel. And the reason the city is called Babel, because they tried to build a tower. And the Bible says they were successful in the building of a tower. Why did Nimrod build this tower? Because he was in defiance of God. He was before God. He was blatantly open in defiance of God. So he built the city to make sure that this God never destroyed his ancestors again. It was a preventive city because he didn't believe or didn't hear the word of God that said to his grandfather, I will never do this again anyway. Mm -hmm. I am not going to sin a floor, but if I don't hear the word of God, I start trying to build and put things in place that will defile God that already gave me a promise. Mm -hmm. And so when I put all my energies in prevention, I can't put my energy on, in now. invention. And so that's been our plight. We've been trying to prevent so yes. long that we can't invent. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. And so as a consequence, Abraham's whole family is the one that was responsible for reproducing the mindset of the world. And it was a Babylonian system. What was that system and mindset? It was a mindset that defied God. If God said, do it this way, we're going to do it this way. God built everything out of stone. But we know when Babylon was built, it was built out of brick. This is in total defiance. So it was a system that didn't produce faith. And so the system had lived to Abraham. He was living in his father's house that believed in a system that defied God. So God says for you to live in faith and become the father of faith, I'm going to have to uh, cut ties with those that are producing the system that would defy you living in okay. faith. That's the very thing that God is saying to you right now. What I'm trying to build is by faith and I can't build it as long as you're in a system that has already been built. I know the system. Please understand that from Noah to Abraham is 400 years. So there's a system that lived 400 years. This is significant. Please hear me. 400 years of ideas that I am going to live a life of prevention and never get to my invention. 400 years of this ideal. And so God comes to Abraham and after 400 years and say, let me break you from this system of prevention and put you in a system of faith that will allow you to be in a system of invention. Why did he pick Abraham? Because he needed to pick somebody that was in a system and showed them how this worked. Abraham was graced enough to do it. Now, this is why he says, I called you from a system and I required you to break ranks with that that you know and uh, and is familiar with and I'm about to start something brand new. So it was no small task for Abraham when he had give, been given the directive of God that this is going to change. Why did you go through the whole story, Pastor? Because what God is asking of you is to break a system that your whole family was in. Here's the problem. Your family is the one that created the mess that you're in. And I need you to break. Now, they're going to talk about you when you leave, but I'm offering you a chance of a lifetime. I want to rename you. I'll give you a name. I'll make your name great. What is that name? I'm going to call you the father of faith. And everything you touch is going to be blessed. That's why we got to understand. Now, the number 400 is very significant. Let me explain. Now, here it is, Abraham. You're going to have to leave a system that your family produced. That's why I called you out of that system. Because I'm trying to start something brand new with you. Now, here it is. 
A major faith move is required when you are moving into the unfamiliar. Please hear me. A major faith move is going to be required. God is going to come to your space. He's going to say to you, I need you to make this move. Where you are is prosperous, but it was not produced by faith. This was in connection to corruption. That's why we everything every say this was in connection with correct. I don't care how good it was, I don't care who produced it, but I'm requiring you to make a decision that would disconnect you from corruption, even though in the corruption you are prosperous. Wow. Because I'm building a life of faith. Many people are praying to a God that has already caused them to uh, call them out of corruption. You want to say connected to the corruption, and now he can't make your name great. Why? Because you're still connected to the corruption. You're still connected to your father's house, your kindred, your country. They are the producers of the corruption that won't let you live in faith. Mm -hmm. And so he said, I'm going to disconnect. He says, I'm going to challenge you to let go of everything you thought you knew, to grab a hold to everything that I'm trying to give you. Let me show you. It's going to be a faith move that will allow you to walk into the unfamiliar. Now, when you say unfamiliar, that means very, the very title of unfamiliar, it means trailblazer. Because I'm taking you somewhere on. on a trail that's never been blazed. Please hear me. Now watch this. I'm coming back to that. I'm coming back to it. I'm coming back to it. Now, he says, this is going to be a faith move, Abraham. I'm disconnecting to you. I'm disconnecting you from a system that you know well. And back and forth because your family produced it. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to move into something that you has ne has never been seen. Let's, let's read it. Hebrews chapter number 11 verse number 8. Watch this. Hebrews chapter number 11. Here's God a challenging Abraham. said, let go. I make your name great. I bless them that bless you. Everything you touch, I'm going to make it be a blessing. I'm going to give you life and it more abundant if you make this move. If you're not making this move, then I can't really connect to you. I'm going to let you live in mercy magic. What does that mean? Every time you turn around, there's something I got. I'm just overcome. I'm just living just enough. It's just barely. He says, I'm done with that season in your life. I'm ready for you to move to the next level. So he's says, boo, and go to the place where I send you. There's a place that I'm about to send you. I need you to hear me right now. Because the text says, he says, you're going to move and you're going to go to the place that I send you. What place is that? He says, I'm not answering that until you move from that. I know you're ready for the answer to the next when you move from what was. Hear me. Now watch this. Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 8. Watch, check it out. It says, it says, it says here, uh, let me get it, let me get it. I'm excited, man. Chapter 11, verse number 8. It says, by faith. Now, I told you, Abraham is now the father of faith. Watch this. By faith. Mm -hmm. In other words, I don't see nothing. I just heard something. Come on. By faith. I heard something. I don't see nothing. Please hear me. Faith coming by what? Hearing. Faith don't come by what you see. If you need if waiting to see something before you make a move, I'm sorry. You won't see it because you can't see it from your current location. Listen. Listen, by faith, Abraham, watch this, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go in out into a place which he should after receive, after what? After you leave this, mm -hmm. then you're going to receive your next. Okay. What, if, what after I leave what? Family, kindred, father's house. Country, kindred, father out. Now watch it again. I need you to get this now. It says, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, the inheritance began when you make that first move. An inheritance. Listen to what it said. Obeyed. He obeyed the prompt. Now remember, he's living in comfort and prosperity produced by his family. And God tells him, I know you're comfortable. I know you're, you're living good. But I need to uh, challenge you to make a move. And you're not even going to know where I'm telling you to go. But by faith, I need you to obey what I said. Mm -hmm. Any of y'all that write down, God, is yeah. God, you unfair. You calling me? You telling me to leave this? Yes, leave. Watch this. He obeyed. The text says he obeyed. And he went out not knowing whether he went. Listen to him. I'm still talking about Abraham. Call out of the era of Chaldea. He's, he's here a faith move from God. Move, leave all familiar and make a move. And I'll show you when you make the move. I'm not going to show you until to make a move. And the Bible says, and he left. Watch it again. It says, and he went out not knowing whether he go. I'm emphasizing this because God has prompted you to do something. You don't know where I'm going. I don't know where I'm about to go. But listen to what God said. Bust the move. If you want it. 
bust the move. You're going to have to leave the familiar. You've been living this system your entire life. I get it. God says he gets it. This is all you know. This is all they fed. This is all your daddy gave you. This is all the country gave you. This is all your kids gave you. This has been the lifestyle that you live. But he's challenging you. If you want your next, you need to bust a move. So it says, by faith, when he was called out to go into a place which he should have to receive for an inheritance. The inheritance don't start until you obey. Why does it say? He obeyed. And when he went out, not knowing whether he went. This is where I got excited. The ninth verse. Ninth verse says, by faith, he sojourned in the land of promise. God promised them where he was. And he says, by faith, I'm going to go get the land of promise. I'm inheriting this. The inheritance began when I bust the first move. <laughs> From the very moment my intentions are after God, the next step I make is in promise. Listen to what to say. And by first, he went out, uh, uh, sojourned in the land of promise. As in a strange country, he did not know this was required faith. This is why he's called the father of faith. Yeah. When you bust your next move, your okay. name is going to go from Abram to Abraham. When you bust your next move, you're going to go from loser that loses to prosperity and always winning. That's what he said. The next step in your obedience to him is going to be the place of blessing. Watch this. Sojourning in the land of promise as in a strange land. Dwelling in tabernacles. Please hear me. Dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't take nobody with you, Abraham, but people that are heirs in the same promise. Wow. If they are not heirs of the same promise, they don't get it. Leave them with your father, your country, and your kindred. Because this is not a season where you need to be explaining. Everybody on your ship in this selective season needs to know that they are inheriting this same blessing. Watch this. Here it is. Here it is. The 10th verse is the power passage. Watch this. The 10th verse said, for he looked for a city. Who looked for a city? Abraham, by faith, watch it, looked for a city which had foundations. Listen, Abraham looked for a city which had foundations, who builder and maker is God. Do you hear what that just said? He says, I'm looking for a city that's foundations are laid by God. In other words, where I'm about to go, the dimensions is based off my faith. Woo. This is not, I'm, I'm not looking for something that is already constructed in somebody else's mind. Mm -hmm. God said, if I move out on faith, watch this, there's a city that's foundation laid by God. That's in the spirit realm. So the, 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 the bigness, the dimensions of where I'm about to go is, is all uh, uh, predicated on what I can believe. Mm. That's why he told me to leave the mindset that I was in because that already limited me to a box. Mm -hmm. And so he says, when you move out in faith, there's a city that's foundation laid by God. You're going to be able to determine how big that city is and what flows in and out of it. The magnitude of the blessing that is about to come up on your life is based off of your faith. There is no limitations. There is no limitation. You can't see. I didn't. God says to Abraham, I'm not going to tell you to go to a city that's already constructed. Because if it's already constructed, that means that another man seen it in his mind. Mm -hmm. I'm sending you to a place of faith because what you're about to construct is coming out of your own mind. So I need you to have a fresh perspective on this next move. Hey, y'all, listen to me. I need you to have a fresh perspective because what you're about to build has never been built. You are built. You are going down in history because you obeyed this sacrifice. You're going down in history because you dared to say, I'm leaving my father's mindset. I'm leaving my country mindset. I'm leaving my father's house mindset. And God is going to allow me to build in faith in this next season, something that nobody's ever seen. So when they say, I don't know, they are correct. You don't know you don't because know. you don't know what God has placed in <laughs> My mind. Let's go back. Let's go back. And I'm out of here because I need to prophesy. I need to prophesy. So Abraham, between Noah and Abraham, it is 400 years. Why did I say that significant? Because this very year, we just celebrated from 1619 Jamestown. It's the very year where the first slaves... 400 years ago, entered into a country. Please hear me very clearly. Just as God had demanded of Abraham, you've been living in a system that won't allow you to leave or live outside of it. There's a mindset that you've been saying and constantly reproducing. It's the mindset of wounded people that are corrupt people. Listen to me. 
if you want to move into the place that foundation is laid by God and be blessed on a level where you are exempt from men's thoughts and the color of men's skin, you're going to have to bust out in faith. But I got to, I, I got to make you know that you got to lead the mindset. You've been living from someone else's perspective, and so I couldn't bless you in your new. 400 years. God is, God is in this season, is shifting us so incredibly that he is making us leave the excuse that it's the color of my skin that's causing me to be under an underachiever. Listen to me very closely. God says as long as you have that mindset, you will have to live the limitations of somebody else. But this season, I'm allowing you to bust out of a mindset that has been in place 400 years. So he's He's, he's offering the same opportunity that he offered Abraham when he came to his house. If you want to live, you want your name to be great, you want to be a blessing and, 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 and everybody be blessed that blesses you, you're going to have to leave this mindset that has been forced upon you. Can you bust this move? Can you bust this move? Remember, remember, as long, I always question, I've always questioned, how can a people that is as talented as we are, Mm -hmm. never come to a place of continuity where we can build. God explained it to me in this text. He says it's just like the city of Babel. Babel means confusion in language. Why is it that our language is always confused? Why can't we get together and build something? Because we are repeating the mistake of Nimrod. Nimrod was building a city to prevent this God from doing what he uh, had did before in flood. Flood. He did not hear the scripture. Mm -hmm. He did not read the scripture. What does the scripture say? God had already promised. Never. Noah, I'm not going to do that. Yes. If I am so focused on preventing what happened to my forefathers, I don't have the energy of creation. Prevention will not let me have a spirit of invention. And I keep saying it's them. That is stopping me. No, it's you that's stopping yourself. You are not living your life based off the blessing of someone other man's word. You're living your life based off the blessings of God and his promises on you. It says, if you're a buster move, but you're going to have to get rid of a mindset. You're going to have to stop letting people tell you what move to bust. Mm. I'm giving you a, an opportunity to go to a city whose foundations are laid by God. In other words, the dimensions is only going to be limited to your faith. If your faith is on another level, the dimensions get larger. What are you going to build in this season? What will we build our faith in this season? This is the season that we're standing up. God is giving opportunities like he's never given before. Let's pray together. Let's pray. The Father, thank you right now for your word. Thank you right now for the people that heard your word on today, Lord. Thank you right now, God. For an incredible shifting in the spirit realm, Lord, that affects our physical. You are looking for people that would dare to leave the mindsets of old and move into the new. Going after the city that foundations is laid in the spirit. The dimensions of the city is based off of our faith in you, Lord. You are allowing us to build what has never been built. Because we're thinking thoughts that have never been thoughts. Because we see you clearly in the spirit realm and what you're doing. Yeah. Thank you so much for alerting us to your desire, your heart. And thank you so much for being able to say yes to that desire. I speak to and speak over the lives of everyone that is under the sound of my voice. This is a new season. This is a new season. This is a new season. This is a new time. New time. Their whole trajectory of life. It's changing right now. Everything is changing. And you're allowing them to walk in the blessings. Overflow in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. amen. This season of overflow, we got to get it. No more excuses. Let's make this happen. Let's do it. I'm talking to people that's been behind, that's been uh, talked about, ridiculed. You are the one that God wants to use in this season. Move in faith. You might not see it. You're going to have to be like Abraham. God says you'll see it when you get there. When you get there. When you get there, you'll see exactly what I'm saying. God had to move him. It's not because God couldn't create what he was, but he didn't want him to be bothered by the people that already lived there. Yeah. <laughs> he don't want you to be bothered. I have to listen to the rhetoric of people that don't have enough vision to see what you see. 
Thank you so much. Now, for those of you that want to give, have you already put it in there? Mm -hmm. Those of you that want to give to this, uh, can you put my mine in there, Past, Pastor G? Pastor G for N O B. Hit the cash app sign before. For those that you want to sow into this, here's a golden opportunity. Whenever you've been blessed by a word, put something on it. I'm telling you, put something on it, and God and see you'll see the manifestation of God's word into your space and your life. We're not playing games. We're blessed to the Lord. I, we do this because God has sanctioned us to do it. And we just thank God for the opportunity to do it. Your life, there, there, there's no more, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, the enemy, I'm praying, and we're interceding very diligently that that we don't fall for the acceptable substitution. The enemy is pulling so many people back into all, and their discernment is so low, they don't even know that this is a strategic plan on the enemy to keep them in a capsule. What happens when I disobey God because I don't have discernment, I don't know his word, word of God, I don't know it. What happens is he keeps me there and he robs me. And then I try to pray to God. And he says, I already gave you the move. I already gave you the move. I already gave you the move. I'm That's already, right. Yes. Yes. But do you yeah. wrong at first? Okay. She, she correct. Yeah. What'd you do? Pastor, pastor for NOB. Pastor G for NOB. This is my cash out. Okay. Pastor G. But well, thank you so much. Uh, uh, expect God to do incredible things in this next season of your life. But you got to know who he is. You got to have a definitive picture of who he is. Or you'll be saying and sacrificing to, to something that won't respond. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even going to tell that story again. But blessings upon blessings upon blessings upon blessings. Please stay with us, man. Friday's Uplift will be on radio on this Friday. But stay with us because God is speaking something. There are other things that I'm praying that God would allow us to release it. And, 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 and strategically in the right time Rightly dividing the word of truth Is that there must be the proper time Of release Of what God is saying And he's given the proper time Because the season is up on us Amen Thank God for it Alright, alright Go to my YouTube page Pastor G At Network of Belief Subscribe For those of you that are not friends of mine And you want to be Send me a friend request And I will get to it Amen. Dallas this Monday. Dallas this morning. I think that's November 25th. We're in Dallas. It'll be 2363 Stemmons Road. We'll be in Dallas this mo this Monday. Thank you so much. Friday, Uplift. Tune in. Uh, we'll be uh, 103.5, 105.5 in Little Rock area. Uh, tell your friends to tune in. Of course, we'll be Facebook Live. We'll be uh, 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 showing it on Facebook Live. So we're excited about everything. That God is doing. Thank you, NOB, abroad, Atlanta, New York, New Jersey, California, Florida, everywhere. Thank you guys so much. We love you. So much. So much. Pastor G. Lady T. We are out of here. Christine Jones, look at your inbox. Christine, look at your inbox. All right. Holla.